Hello, everybody. Happy Friday, and welcome back to the digital edition of NHL Now. You know, each we always get the best guests on Fridays. Yes, we do. Eddie O in the house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, it's official. It's official. <laughs> Hello, Welcome. Jackie. How is he here? Hello, Ege. How are you? I hope everybody is doing well. And uh, the one sport that has not gone into quarantine for the most part has been horse racing. So thank God for that. It would be, uh, <laughs> unbelievable we didn't have any horse racing going on. But uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't say uh, I miss you guys. I miss seeing you on my television. And I hope you and your family are well and staying safe. And Everybody out there uh, catching us, uh, I send uh, well wishes and a lot of prayers, and hopefully we get on the right side of this thing sooner than later. But it is great to be with you, and uh, nice to be with you on a Friday for sure, because that means the weekend is here, and we're just going to do the same thing I've been doing the last eight weeks anyway. So whether it's Saturday or Sunday, good to be with you. Thanks for having me. Well, Eddie, uh, you mentioned you know the horse racing. I know that's a, been a big part of, of your life. We joke about it all the time. I've been... You know, everybody's doing different things in this quarantine, and I've been reading your book, which is actually has been really good. You did a great Thank job you. with it. You and, and Perry did a terrific job. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of different things. But, you know, looking back, I mean, you had a long career in the NHL and a really – I think people know you as a broadcaster. They don't realize what a really good player you were. What do you remember about that early portion of your career in Chicago and then Toronto? What, what's the one thing you think stands out in, in that, that era of your career? Well, I appreciate that, EJ. Um, you know, look, when you come into the National Hockey League as an 18-year-old, and I was lucky enough to be the third overall pick in the 84 entry draft a long, long time ago uh, behind Mario Lemieux and Kirk Muller. Um, look, I got drafted by my hometown team, so I, I lived and died as a Blackhawk fan as a kid, and uh, all I ever wanted to do was to play in the NHL. I didn't know how you got there. I didn't know there was a draft or anything. I just wanted to play in the NHL, and I was lucky enough to be drafted and, uh, and play in my hometown. But look, I mean, there was a lot of pressure. I mean, I put a lot of pressure on myself, EJ. We've talked a lot, uh, you, know, on, you know, on the air and off the air. I mean, I, I had a lot of pressure. I put a lot of pressure on myself because I wanted to do so well for so many people. And, you know, my first two years went really well. And in my third year, I had a tough year. I just didn't have a good season. And then the Blackhawks decided to go in a different direction and sent me to Toronto and I kind of really believe uh, and feel that once I went to Toronto for the fourth year of my NHL career, uh, everything just kind of took off. Even though it's, you know, one of the hockey meccas of the world, Toronto, and playing for the Maple Leafs, I really kind of felt less pressure, if that makes any sense, where I could just go play hockey and not worry about, you know, trying to please everybody and, and make everybody, uh, uh, you know, make them feel good and, and to know that, hey, I'm a hometown kid and I'm doing well for them. And, so I think when I went to Toronto, it just kind of the pressure was off and I got a chance to play, play a lot. And I think the key to that, EJ, was I played wing pretty much my whole time in Chicago. When I went to Toronto, I became a center iceman, which was my natural position. And, you know, the so-called rest is history. I ended up scoring 42 goals in my first year in Toronto and, and everything else kind of worked out. But uh, I would never trade in anything to play my first game as a Blackhawk. I scored my first goal as a Blackhawk. And then eventually, uh, you know, finish with the Blackhawks some uh, 16 years later. It goes to show, right, the old cliche of like a change of scenery might be good for this guy. It really can be the case sometimes uh, for a player. Let me ask you this. What's the most difficult part of writing a book looking mm -hmm. back at your own career? Because it's, it's your story, right? So yeah. I imagine it's hard to kind of figure out what to put in there, what to leave out. What, what was the toughest yeah. part for you? Well, that's a tremendous question, Jackie. And, uh, you know, you guys both know me very well. And I, I'm, I think I've always been an emotional, sensitive person. And, and to go through that process of putting pen to paper with I did with my co-author, Perry Lefko, and doing a lot of communicating, Jackie, um, there was a lot of reflection. Uh, it was very emotional. Uh, I found times where I had to pause and gather my thoughts and not get wrapped up maybe emotionally in things, whether it was, um, you know, uh, being in the delivery room when my second son was being born and then I was told I was being traded from the Maple Leafs to the Winnipeg Jets or, you know, going through my cancer battle, uh, you know, a couple of years ago and, and, uh, and reading for the first time what my kids saw, which is a big part of the book. Uh, 
at the end of the book, they kind of through their eyes, they wrote chapters on, on what I was going through. So, um, you know, at the start of it, Jackie, I was like, nah, you know, who wants to read about my life? Right. And you start getting into it a little bit more. And then you're just like, you know what, I, I think I have a message here. I think I have a story here to maybe, uh, help people inspire them, help them get through the day, let them know that, you know, the, the, the road isn't smooth. I mean, look at the world we're all living in right now. Like, this is a battle for a lot of us. I mean, obviously, we're thinking about all the people that are, are not feeling well. But uh, for me, I just wanted to try to help one person, especially with my cancer battle, and, and maybe inspire a young hockey player, boy or a girl out there to say, hey, you know what? People doubted him his whole career and said he would never make it because he was from Chicago or he was an American-born player. He won't make it to the NHL. And hopefully they say, hey, if that old guy can do it, I can do it. And uh, I'm, I'm really proud of it. And, uh, I don't think I'll write another book, uh, but, uh, it was, uh, it was very therapeutic and I'm hoping to help one person that, that gets the opportunity to read it. And uh, hopefully I can make a difference in their life. Well, it is, I've been reading it, Eddie, and it's a terrific book. It's really been fun to read. And I know you and hearing these stories, I, it's some of a lot of them I hadn't heard. So it was a great, it's a great book. And I would urge people, I mean, we're looking for things to do right now. It's a great, it's a great read. I, I want to ask you, I mean, you've been all over this game in your life, a, a player, uh, a broadcaster, a coach for the Pittsburgh Penguins. You know, I've been reading, you know, we have time on our hands. So I'm reading different stories and I'm hearing your <laughs> name is mentioned in a couple of different places here. I mean, would you think about leaving the booth and going back into either coaching or management? Well, uh, EJ, thanks for the, the kind words on the book. And uh, remember, you can't always believe what you read or you hear or you see, right, EJ? Right? We're all in that true. business. Right? That is true. It, true. You know what? Well, look, at, we do have a lot of free time and a lot of things start servicing. Yeah. And look, I'm not going to deny anything that I've talked to, you know, a few teams over the course of the last, you know, little while, uh, months, I will say. But um, just thrilled that, you know, people would think of me that way. Look, at, I love what I do. I work. I do the games for the Blackhawks locally. I do games nationally for NBC, and also I get to do horse racing as well. So, look, at I, I love what I do. Do I miss being uh, rolling the sleeves up and being in the day-to-day -day like I was in Pittsburgh coaching? Absolutely. You know, the playing part, all that. Yeah, I think once you're a player, you're always a player. So, um, you know, look, at I, I've had some incredible conversations with some, with some great people and some great organizations, but uh, I'm very content. I'm very much at peace. But uh, you never say never in this business, EJ, right? Because you just never know what might be on the other side. But uh, I love what I'm doing. And look, at if I can get back and start doing games, that means we're all in a much better place than we That's are right. now we can get back to the greatest game in the world. So, uh, yeah, it's amazing with all this free time, all of a sudden, all these things start kind of creeping up and festering. And all of a sudden, you know, it's rumors here and stories here and yeah. stories there. So uh, we'll leave it at that. But uh, yeah. I, I love I love what I do. And uh, I love the game because it's given me everything that I have in my life. Well, hopefully the game is back sooner rather than later. But, you know, as EJ mentioned, you know, you've been a part of the game in so many different ways. And, you know, as a player, as a coach, as a broadcaster, when you read about some of these hypothetical scenarios that we might be getting into in the next couple of months, I'm just curious what your thoughts are on some of these things. Because when I read about like artificial audience noise and that sort of thing, right. I was kind of like, what? What right. is that going to look like? Well, could you imagine, you know, being in the booth for a game or doing a game and hearing fake crowd noise? What, what do you make of that idea? Yeah, well, uh, I, I think the first thing is, Jackie, is that, you know, look at uh, if, if we are allowed in the buildings as broadcasters, again, I don't even know if that's part of the plan or not. Yeah. But if we are, all I know, and you guys have both been in, in uh, press boxes and a lot of rinks in the NHL, all I know is our most views, we're going to have a better view in any building we're in that we've ever had before <laughs> because we're yes. so far away in a lot of buildings. So selfishly, I'm looking like, wow, maybe we could get really low and get it. <laughs> and see what the numbers are. Right. I mean, that's how I look at it, but yeah. you know, look at, I, I think all the scenarios are obviously, you know, that everybody's talking about a lot of the possibilities and what do you do to make it more like a regular season? If there isn't any fans or the playoffs or whatever, it's not going to be the same. We, we understand that. And we know that, but, um, you know, we're just waiting for the okay. And, I, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say this, is that I, I, really, I really think that the commissioner, Mr. Bettman and Bill Daly, I think they've done a really, really good job of, of being out front, communicating with the press, communicating, obviously, with the players and, and obviously the owners. I think they've done a really good job of, of being able to give us information 
uh, when it's available. And again, they continue to, to, to deflect, hey, to the medical professionals and wherever that is and whenever that is, we'll be back. And uh, hopefully it's sooner than later. But I think they've done a really good job uh, with handling this, uh, obviously, this unbelievable situation that we're all living, not just the game of hockey. Yeah, I agree with you. Hold on, Ege. Here we go, buddy. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Come on, Jackie. Let's go. Oh, I love Let's it. Go. I love it. You know what? I'm going to have to talk to you after this and figure out, you know, what kind of bets I should be placing on ponies. I think I got to get in the mix here. Like, I think I, I, think yeah. I do. There's nothing oh. wrong. With, we, we, love, we love rookies, and we'd be happy to help you. So uh, the more help that we can get, the better it will be. So anytime you need a tip or two, just call EJ or you can get a hold of me and hopefully turn a couple of uh, toonies into uh, maybe a 30 or 40 toonies. How's that? Oh, that would be lovely. <laughs> I love that we're talking toonies and loonies. Who would have thunk it? But uh, <laughs> listen, uh, we're, we thank you so much for the time, Eddie. Uh, hopefully uh, you're, we're all back watching games really yeah. soon. And uh, have a great weekend. Happy Friday, everybody. And uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you later.